Mr. Roll. It's probably Bassy trying to be funny. I don't know if he's trying to troll me or you guys, but uh, so you want to tap it? Well, I haven't yet, so no. But in all seriousness, yeah, like it's, it's probably Bassy. He thinks he's funny. Again, I don't. I don't know if the joke's on me or it's on you guys. So believes <laughs> that. Yeah, coach. Um, I could shave into a pretty good mustache, <laughs> and we are we are going to London next week, so maybe get some AFC Richmond gear. Get going here. So, all right, sorry, D-Led. Okay. Uh, let's get started with uh, some offense. Um, uh, Calvin was saying you're still figuring it out how you want to move the ball and how teams are trying to play y'all. Uh, where, where are y'all at with that going into, you know, the fourth week of facing Washington? Well, there's a constant evolution, uh, D-Led, when you talk about offensive football. You're in year one. You're, you're putting things in. Um, you know, it's not a carbon copy, hey, blueprint, this is how we ended it in Tennessee, this is what we're going to do, here's the playbook. you got to adapt your personnel. So there's a, there's a couple of things that, you know, as there's a natural evolution. That's why I talk about growth and, you know, improving during the season. And then part of that is as a, as a staff and as players as we're coming together. And, and that's a fun challenge. You see how teams are starting to play you, what they're trying to take away. And any way we can be better, we're constantly looking at it. It's probably the easiest answer for you. And then things that work, you can keep, and things that sort of, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got to try to build off it, but you don't want to become painfully obvious, mm-hmm. right? Just because it worked last week, maybe a certain scheme, uh, you may want to build off it and find you know different ways to get to it. A lot of ways. I mean, you can't just say the exact same thing. Guys are too good in this league; they'll they'll call it out before you run it. And uh, but that's the game. That's what we get paid to do, and as coaches and as players and as professionals. Michael, the front that Washington has, the fact that you've faced two really strong fronts mm-hmm. already in week 22, does that play somewhat of, I won't say an advantage, but does that help in some ways that it's, you're, you're seeing this type of level of front week in, week out? Yeah, there's a lot of good players, Michael, in this league. Obviously, Washington's invested heavily in it. You know, a bunch of first rounders up there. They're, they're a talented bunch. You know, a little different scheme. You know, there's always little nuances to how this scheme may play. Uh, front, you know, whether they how they play their gap controls or style, and, you know, there's a lot, there are some nuances. Uh, obviously, the, the talent level is, jumps off the tape at you. Um, you. You would hope, you know, as we build things, same thing about building confidence. You know, you got tough matchups every week, but this is another challenge. They're, they're, they've invested a lot and they're very talented. Uh, and I know on Monday we talked about Andrew Sheffield, Gay, you know, the whole litany of people. Are any of those guys going to practice or in? You'll see. Uh, yeah. Well, we got 21 days, right, right. To, to to activate guys, and I, I like that mechanism. I think that you know, it's a good thing the league did. It helps you, helps get good players back. Um, talk about player safety, and I, I think it's smart what the league did. And, and so, with those guys, I think you'll see you'll, I don't know, you won't think you'll see those guys out there. We'll, we'll assess them as a week, what they can handle today, whether it's this week, next week, or the week after. Uh, we're fortunate we got some time to make a decision. But you'll see those guys, I'm talking about Sheffield and Andrews, they'll be out there working today. And we'll just have to monitor them, what they can handle, and we'll go from there. And as far as Russ and... Russ, it'll be day-to-day. Um, the same thing with Darby, uh, you know, AJ. There's a different process, obviously. Yeah. You're dealing with different injuries. But, uh, you know, I think feel good about hopefully seeing AJ, and then there's another step he has to go through. Right. Yeah. 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 No, you, 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 should, you should see AJ out there, uh, Russ and Darby. At different stages, but none of those guys we feel. What's that? Are you gonna snap me off, Bassey? See, look at him. He, he, he's bold, man. You guys don't see the. He believes. I know he's he's getting he's getting arrogant over here. I, you know, you gotta see how he really reacts behind the scenes. So he looks nice and friendly up here. Um, all right, sorry. Next question. Coach, how would you describe your team's next man up mentality? Of course, we just talked about the injury um, and just their response to it after this week. Yeah, Anthony, I noticed notice that Michael got here a little bit earlier today. Um, <laughs> so, I believe. Yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> but Anthony, it's, it's a good question because that's life in the NFL and it's human nature. You know, you, you got to let go of things you can't control and the quicker you can adapt and try to problem solve and you know, no pun intended, but you do have to, you have to get that belief in those guys. When you go in there and a guy has to step up and you got to be able to go find a way to win a football game. So you hope to build off that from last week. 
guys stepped up, TJ, um, Avery, you know, different guys at different times, uh, receivers, OZ, uh, you know, different ways you do things by committee, and that's, that's our job. So it's good to see. Hopefully we can build off that. And, of course, this is the Washington football team. Um, they have many things on defense that they're good at. What are some things that stand out to you when you just look at them on tape? Yeah, they've got a really uh, solid front. Jack Del Rio has got a really sound scheme. Uh, he's you know, obviously done a really good job in this league for a long time. Uh, their backers fly around. they got some speed back there. Um, and they throw a lot of bodies at you, a lot of looks. But again, they've invested heavily in that front. It's a very talented front. And we got our hands full up there. Tori? Wanted to ask a couple of questions um, about Antonio Gibson and kind of you talking yet on Monday about him being like a problem. And, and I was curious kind of what what problems you think he, he kind of his skill set causes. Well, he's a playmaker. Uh, you know, they, they he was a receiver in college, uh, Memphis guy, usually pretty well versed, a younger brother. Um, played at Memphis, and he's like the Buddy Garrity of Memphis now, so he'll always tell me who's good, who's there, or not. If anybody watches Friday Night Lights, you may get that reference. But um, he, so I've watched Antonio Gibson for a while, uh, being at Memphis, and he's a dynamic playmaker. And, they, and I thought Brian Silfield, those guys did a good job with him there. Goes to Senior Bowl, plays running back. So he's a weapon all over the field. He's got good speed, he's a, he's a playmaker. Seventy-plus yard touchdown of his on the screen pass, and I just thought his vision was, was yeah. very well. Can, can you kind of speak to? Sure, I, I, you know, again, I don't know him. Uh, I've never coached him, but I just see what I see off film from college and the pros. Uh, he's got great spatial awareness, and I think that's some things that some guys naturally have. That usually, if a guy can play multiple positions, that's probably a reason. Um, you know, you can move him everywhere. He just kind of sees it. They feel angles out, and so you could see that on tape as well. Allison. How important was it just to get this win early and instill this belief in the team for not preventing kind of this losing skin and to keep it yeah. rolling out? I know. I feel like I'm playing myself up here every time I say that. Thanks, David. But um, <laughs> no, it, it, it's important because, you know, you don't want to keep coming in on Monday and being, ra you know, you, you don't want to rationalize it, but you want to I'll say, like, here's what you're doing. At least you have some results. You know, we got a long way to go. We know that, and we know the grind of the season, but at least in the work you're putting in, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but here's the way we're doing it. We're trying to build something, and at least you got something to break through, say, hey, look, here's what happens when we play together. We're able to finish the game. Clearly, we got a ton of work to do to move on, but it, it, is, it is, I guess, refreshing, yeah, and you do. You don't want that to, to pile up because that momentum is real. How important do you think just the evolution of the kicker and how important we're seeing now coming down to the wires with a cool kick or a Justin mm -hmm. Tucker? I mean, the evolution of the kicker in the league and what do you think the importance Yeah, and it's, it's a tough spot to break to break in because a lot of those guys, you see them, um, again, they're normally not high uh, draft picks where there's early investments in them. Uh, there's always exceptions, but a lot of those guys, you've seen them make careers, and sometimes they, those guys have to get second, third chances. Um, you know, just my experience, guys like Brett Kern, I think is one of the better punters in the league. You know, that was a guy that the year before I got to Tennessee, I believe he was picked up off waivers, but he had been in Denver. Um, there's several kickers that have that story. Koo, right? And then now we're seeing some, some of that keep progressing with Cam. And um, so it takes a certain mindset. You know, you're kind of on an island right there. Um, that's why it's underrated, too, about the long snappers. You hope to never hear their name. That's why I look at a guy like Josh Harris. He's the ultimate professional. These guys go out there, do their job. They don't want to get recognition because that means they're doing their job. So it all goes into play, but you definitely have to have a certain mindset, and it's a tough spot to break in. So this kind of follows the same thought, and you mentioned Cam there. After the game in New York, you brought up both Cam and Jalen as guys that had a rough game, got a second chance, and really excelled. What is it that you see in players or want to see in players to get that second chance, and what are the things that would preclude a guy from getting that second chance? Yeah, well, there's a lot to unpack. It's a good question, but it's – You've got to like you got to be able to. There's a fine line between letting a guy. If you're going to sit here and say, "Hey, we're about improving," and then letting a guy an opportunity to. Otherwise, you look like a hypocrite, right? As a coach, and sometimes you're going to find out more about a person when they struggle. Uh, you know, no different than you know how we've started the season. How do you respond? Can you actually improve, or are you going to let that stuff creep in and, and doubt? You know, cave you in. And so I think sometimes you can. There's you don't want to go through it, but it. It helps you on the other side of it, and it says a lot about it. And I think it says a lot about Jalen and Cam. So then, if a guy goes around, or and this happens in 
every profession, and if they can't do it, at some point you've got to make an objective decision. Okay, well, let's try something different. But uh, I believe in second chances, um, and, and it's not a disaster if it's one game. That's why I said you got to keep the perspective of 17 games, perspective of a long career, especially some of these rookies. You know, some of the guys will have bigger impacts this year than others, but that doesn't necessarily mean in 22 and 23 that guys that may not play as much won't have huge impacts then. So it's, it's just a hard – it's hard to have success. It's even harder to sustain success. Does that help? Okay. No, sorry. I know I can get – filibuster here for a while, but I'm trying not to. Uh, is there anything about the recent glut of analytics that has changed, and maybe it's not so recent in your mind, but has changed the way that you think about any part of the game or even coach any part of the game? Yeah, I think it's probably, you know, it's, it's definitely challenged some things that are conventional wisdom um, and allows you to look at it. And it's just part of the decision-making process, you know. Uh, I found it fascinating in different sports, people have gone all in, and whether they just said, hey, we're going to do nothing but three-pointers and layups, right. and you live by that, or, or certain strategies in baseball. And at some point, you've got to use it as part of the decision-making tool. And I think that's where you've got to be open-minded and learn from it. OK, it's a different way to look at it. Yes, OK, then and ultimately, they pay you to make a decision. And it's never perfect. The, you know, it's like I said, if, if the numbers tell you 53%, OK, they're, you're taking a risk either way. Okay, the numbers may be in your favor, but then you, you've got to trust and make a decision. Uh, I think anything that can help you become more objective or maybe think about things would certainly help. Uh, I appreciate that, but you have to understand grain of salt. It's also user. Uh, you know, you got to make sure you have the right user with that information as well. So it all plays into it. Is there anything specific that has stood out from all that data? There's so much. I mean, yeah, I think you're. One thing that's helped? I don't know if it can help. I think you see trends. You know, it's like, who's going to go through it first? I think it's pretty common now, fourth and four or less. You're seeing more people go for it on the plus side of the field. Uh, that's becoming more common. Um, again, it doesn't mean it's perfect, but maybe it makes the game a little more exciting. Um, but there's ebbs and flows. You know, you can, you, you can certainly you, – you, that's what makes life fun. It's, it's okay to have difference of opinions. You want to have the best data available, and then you can make decisions. And if they work, it looks smart, it don't. You know, you live with that consequence, too. Uh, Coach, um, how pleased have you been with the defense um, as far as their progression, you know, from game one to, you know, game three? Same thing. You know, things we got to clean up. Uh, certainly there's other challenges this week. Uh, really good skilled players at every, every spot uh, for the uh, football team. And so we got a different set of challenge. You want to keep improving, uh, especially down in the red zone. I thought we took a step there, uh, you know, the way we started the game. Wasn't perfect, but we were able to get in there and make a play, make them kick a field goal. You just want to keep keep evolving, keep improving. Same thing. And as far as uh, you talk about the uh, Washington's uh, front, you know, I know guys are really talented up front. Um, how to how do you as a play caller take the necessary steps to kind of maybe take advantage of the back end of the defense? Well, it's a good defense all around. I mean, the front gets a lot of attention. Uh, you know, kind of look at it just kind of practical. You know, they invested a ton in it. They got good players back in the back end too. We know that, you know, Landon Collins, Fuller, all those guys, uh, St. Juice, he's playing pretty well as a rookie. Um, they got guys that can play multiple spots, they roll guys in a backer, Holcomb, Bostic, Jamin Davis. So um, they're, they're challenged too. So I know the front gets attention, but again, you know, that's what they invested in, right? First round picks, they're paying those guys a, a decent chunk of change, and they're good players. Chris. Jalen Mayfield has improved significantly from the opening game. What have you seen from him? What things is, is he doing anything differently? Sure. He's playing better technique wise. I think you're seeing a little bit of confidence grow. It's a tough job. You get thrown in there as a rookie, as a lineman. You're playing every snap. You know, there's, there's things you can handle in packages offensively with skill guys or defensively, depending on it. You can rotate them out. but. More times than not, I mean, I think New England tried it a couple of years ago. They were kind of rolling guys, but more times than not, uh, unless there's an injury, those same five played damn near every snap. So, you know, that's he's done a nice job, and hopefully he continues to create good habits and they pay off on Sundays. Are you doing specific things to help, the, to help him and others on the offensive line for the scheme? Or anything sure. that's a, yeah, that's our job. And, and Led and Chandler and, and Mario and Rags and everybody's a staff. I mean, that's our job. I and mean, we, you know, you can't just collect a check and go out there and clap. You know, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but you know, that's what we look at. You know, you work on your fundamentals, and that's what they pay us to do. 
uh, problem solve and develop and, and get these guys helping. And, uh, and you see Jalen progressing and, and letting those guys do a nice job with them. With Curtis Samuel, you don't know whether he's going to be really available. What does that change for y'all defensively if he does? Because Yeah, he's Curtis another does. dynamic playmaker. Um, you know, he's played in multiple spots too, uh, a little bit like Gibson, you know, where you've seen the guy do a lot of different jobs on the field. So, yeah, we just got to be ready. And it's another good football player, skill guy they have if, if he's up and ready to go. Have really your own guy like that, Patterson too. Is that, yeah, are you, you think you're seeing more and more of those types of guys in the league than before? Is it yeah. just getting more attention? And I can't remember what it was. I think we talked about this in training camp. Somebody asked me. But I think it's what you're seeing, the talent pool that's coming in the, the, you know, from the high school levels, the college, uh, kind of these hybrid athletes, guys that are playing multiple spots. Maybe it's a seven-on-seven seven league. They play all year, you know, and they, they define their skills. So it's not just fixed where they just line up and the running backs can't catch and they're only runners and – Receivers are only receivers. You know, I think you're seeing that and even on the defensive end. You're seeing a lot of guys that used to be pigeonholed as, hey, there's this height and weight. They're only going to play safety. Now you're seeing these guys play in the, in the box. But it's just a natural, to me, evolution of the game. You're seeing the way that the game's being played at high school levels, college, the type of athletes that are coming in. So I think, it, yes, I think it's a great question, but it all kind of goes in together. That's my thought. Doesn't mean I'm right. But. Maria? You talked about before the importance of, of closing games out. And in the fourth quarter, you guys are able to do that, strength some stuff together finally to make sure that you guys did do that. What exactly did you see against the Giants that makes you think, OK, they can be competitive late and, and hang on to a lead? Well, I mean, it goes in there. You know, it's the act of actually doing it. You know, you get challenged. And you take the ball 12 and a half minutes, and you got to go down the field. You're on the road. You get a momentum swing. You know, they, they, they get a touchdown, go for two. They get it and make it a 14-7 game. Find out who you really are. Uh, you know, are you about to talk or, you know, can you actually implement it? And you go out there and grind to drive out, put the ball in, coup bangs it in, so it's a tie ball game. Uh, you know, Cam executes, kicks t touchback. Defense, they even got a first down. They didn't panic. Fowler makes a huge play. Dion makes a really big play on third down because he doesn't make that tackle. You know, they're going to make a decision probably, uh, you know, instead of being fourth and nine because yeah, they, were, they were screaming down there on that screen. And, and, it's an underrated play that Dion made. And we get the ball back and, and go down there and execute it. And that's what we want to be. You want to be in games. Sure, you'd love it. That's life in the NFL. If you're a competitive team, most of these games are going to come down to one possession. And you got to be able to execute. So that was very encouraging. Were you actually pleased with what you saw in the fourth quarter? Yeah, absolutely. Is it accurate to think that offensive philosophies come in two basic sizes, one being we identify our best playmakers and we build around that. And one being we build a system that takes advantage of every playmaker and we lean on that. I mean, obviously everything's a, everything is in the middle a little bit, but is, it, is, it, is one of those the starting places for every offensive system? Well, I don't necessarily see it that way. Um, you know, it, it just depends on, you know, I guess it's different. If you're building a college program, you know, you may have a completely different philosophy depending on the resources you have, where you're at, how you recruit, the amount of depth you can create, you know. And then in the NFL, which I like about it, it's there's a salary cap, um, there's a draft, and you got to figure out to me it's who can do the, the best with, you know, the resources given because there, there's injuries, and if you get an injury to a guy, maybe you're uh, counting on or paying a lot of money. Okay, can you – to me what coaching is, can you take another guy? Can you make things work? Can you – and you have success that way. Um, uh, you know, I, and, I, and I get the question. It's just hard for me because my mind doesn't look like that way. Like, I have certain philosophies and beliefs, and I've always tried to take players, and how can they help us win? How can I help make them successful? I think that's what most good coaches do. Uh, there's certainly been guys that have marketed themselves a different way, you know, about their offense, and, uh, you know, they want to brand it great. I don't look at it that way. So it's tough for me to answer like saying two, but I think I think you got to look at your situation. I think it's very different in college football, depending on where you're at. In the NFL, life changes so quick. You're an injury at quarterback. Okay, there's nothing you can you know may not be able to do the rest of the year. You got an injury at you know two key skill spots. Okay, how do you adapt? That's the what I love about the challenge of the NFL. Uh, yeah, coach. Uh, I might have missed it, but uh, did we do we uh, update on Marlon Davidson? Oh, you didn't miss it. Yeah, you didn't miss it. Do I thought I was gonna get one over on you? I was gonna get one over it. Uh, same thing. Another guy day to day. Uh, we'll see where he's at. I, um, and then, like I said, I don't, I don't anticipate him practicing day, but it doesn't mean he can't play on Sunday. 
just being back home for this game, how big how big of an instance is it to get a win at home, being that this is the first time since we won? Well, you know, obviously you need to get a win, right, regardless. Uh, but certainly, yeah, we, we want to, like, that matters to us. You, you want this to be a home field advantage, but we got to do our part. And we got great fans here, and you want to put a good product, you want them excited, so it becomes an advantage. I mean, I, I, we're, we're not anything uh, without the fans. You know, we might as well just go play in the parking lot. So it does matter. And I appreciate our fans, and we want to put a winning product on there. We got to win, regardless of that. But yeah, certainly we want Mercedes Benz, and we got to do our part, become a really tough place to play. And, and, but again, I, I take it my responsibility to make sure we got the, a good product on the field to do that. Anything else? Appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks.